Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I am the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is going on, my man? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. All right. Well, you... You're busy with work, you're preaching, yep, you bought preaching. a house. Mm-hmm. Seems like a lot's going on. Mm, but I can handle it. Why is that? Because I'm a... I, I, are you I, a, you're a what? Huh? You, what, what are you going to say? I'm a, I'm a bad mamma jamma. Oh, okay. All right. You know? Okay. I can take care of these things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're a self-sufficient man. Uh, I didn't say that. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're a well, bad mamma jamma. I'm a bad mamma jamma. Yeah, the, yeah. 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 Self-sufficiency comes with part of being a bad mamma jamma. Mm-hmm. And a loving and supportive wife. And a merciful and kind mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. 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 Both of them. Yeah. On equal planes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that might be blasphemous right there. I don't know. I don't know about that. So um, so you guys got your house. When are you hoping to move in? Uh, I want to get the floors done first. Actually, I got to get a hold of that guy today. Mm-hmm. Sent me a quote yesterday, so I got to take a look at it. But Yeah. I want to get the floors. Uh, a little sand. shag carpeting. <laughs> yeah. <What? No. laughs> Going retro. Uh-uh. Get the floors redone and then painted. Okay, that's not what I asked. I don't care. When don't, are you moving in? I don't. I got to do get the that math. Done. Do I, the I, math. I, no, because I don't know when he's going to get in there. When would you like to move in? Uh, now. Okay, but like realistically, when when do you hope to be in? By the end of the month. Really? Yeah. Ooh. By yeah. the end of this month? End of this month, yeah. Oh, wow, that's nice. Mm-hmm. So you want to be in there in June? Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Now, uh, are we like um, went the move in? You hire movers, or do you do it yourself? I hire movers, yeah. Well, I know the answer. <laughs> even I don't. Even I, I'm like, no, I hire movers not. Yeah, yeah. The last two times, I'm like, no. First of all, I'm not asking my friends to help. No, because we ain't going. Because <laughs> I don't. I don't like that. And uh, yeah, I'll just I'd rather pay for it. Well, we can box it up. That's fine. But like the whole moving thing. Yeah, now forget that, man. Just just hire. It's worth it. It's worth it's every totally penny. totally worth it. Then you just stand there like upstairs, downstairs, back bedroom, whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, your new house, does it have a study? Uh, it will, yeah. Yep. Yep. And is the, I didn't, I don't remember. Did the, Is there a basement finished and all that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is that where the study will be or would that be more no. like a family rec room? No, that's just, no, that'll be the kids. The kids realm. The kids' yeah. realm. Yeah, throw them down there. Throw them down there. That'll be where the TV is. You throw in some hot pockets and something like that. Pizza rolls every yep. once in a while. That's it. Down yeah. There. Yeah. There's a fridge oh, down there. There's a sink. Nice. There's everything down there. Yeah. Cool, man. But uh, yeah, no, that'll be the kids. Yeah. What are you most excited about in terms of getting a, a new spot? Is it just like uh, the quiet, the more quiet, and maybe more space more for space. the family? Yeah. yeah sure. 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 Uh, for me, it's more about like space from neighbors. Yeah, it was quiet. We were hanging out the other, the other night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was quiet. You could, the only thing you can really hear is an occasional jet plane up, way up in the sky, like you yeah. hear in any neighborhood. Uh, speaking, any neighborhood speaking, of, speaking of the sky, mm-hmm. uh, I was going to share this out for Tuesday's Banter of Truth, but yeah. I'm going to share it now. Anyway. Okay. So last night we were in the hot tub. Yeah. You? And, uh, Michelle and I uh, and the Earls. Okay. And so we're in the hot tub, and we see the, the string of lights in the sky. Have yeah. you heard about this? No. I kid you not. There was like... 30, 40, just, and they just, it just kept, yeah, like moving, right. moving, moving, moving. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, what is going on? You know, it, it drones, SpaceX. Oh, SpaceX. SpaceX. Yeah. They're sending their Starlink satellites. Oh, that's cool. And so we're like, we're looking, I'm like, uh, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Joe was right. The truth is out there. Like, <laughs> I don't believe in all the alien stuff. I was like, I should have listened to Joey. But no, dude, it was beautiful. It was really, really, yeah. And so because, you know, out there, there's, you know, hardly lights on, you know, it's really dark. You could see the stars. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's quiet. I like it. Yeah. And it's like you're six minutes from my house, so that's good. Mm, Quick that pop made, over. That made you happy, yeah? Yep. Mm-hmm. So just let me know when my when the guest room's all made up for me. Oh, yeah. yeah cool, 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 cool. Little, cool, uh, cool, 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 cool. Little, yeah, I'll let you know. Little dwarf studio. Yeah, man. I'm coming there. It's a little studio apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now, 
Speaking of sky, mm-hmm. and speaking of you know strange things happening mm. in the air. Oh shoot! You want to talk about that now? Might as well. Let's do it. You don't want to save that for? <laughs> no, nope, we're doing this now. Okay, since it is out there, you know it's kind of it's kind of out there. Yeah, uh, you know what? I want everyone, Jen. Yeah, and Jen. <laughs> I want the Jens to know. Yeah. I asked Joey, are you sure you could share this? Yeah, well, I'm sure I can share it because... Uh, okay, I just I want... I, for I the can do record, what I want to do. For the I'm, record. I have to ask permission to do stuff. For the record, I said, are you sure you could share this? I can share whatever I want. Uh, yeah, sure. Jen. Yeah, I can do what I... I can do my thing. I'm going to oh, do okay. my thing. Okay. But I'm going to go and ask Jen. I have permission to say something. So, Jen, I, I, I told her... Jenny listening. I, but she's going to find... She's going to listen when she finds she out. She still won't listen. Okay. But I said, Jen, Jen Mon. Jen Mon listens. I need you to make sure Jen knows... That I try to prevent this. Go. Okay. So my wife and two of her friends went on a trip to Florida recently because everybody gets to go to Florida, mm. but me for, for vacation time. It is great there. And so they, uh, they were on the plane and the, here's the short story. It's actually, it's an involved story, but the short story is, um, these three Christian ladies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not Karens, Christian ladies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not just good people. Uh-huh. So they're on the plane yeah. and uh, they're and all three oppose. No, um, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, all three. Okay. No, yeah. Of course, like me, we don't like the uh-huh. mask mandate, yeah, and, but we wear our so masks. The, the, the three heading to QAnon meeting. No, there's none of that. They're going to Florida to chill. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had their masks on, mm-hmm. um, but uh, someone was looking. Yeah. They were eating and drinking and their nat- masks weren't totally up. And so when they were done, Stuart, Flight, flight attendant comes over and says, hey, uh, ladies, uh, make, make sure your mask is over your nose, too, because it wasn't over their nose. And they go, oh, yeah, sorry, no problem. Put it up. That was it. That was the only act of noncompliance, and it wasn't noncompliance. They were just asked to do it, and they did it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, they're laughing because they're having a good time. They're just kind of doing their own thing and laughing. And it sounds like maybe uh, the Spirit Air flight attendant uh, took offense to them laughing, thought they were laughing at him. First of all, I want to laugh at you. Me. I want to laugh at them, sorry. Yeah, yes. For f- even flying spirit. Well, there's a whole reason behind that because one of the girls flies spirit once a month and she has a great experience, no problems ever. I don't, I don't ever do spirit. Continue. Yeah, yeah. Spirit are the Crocs of airlines. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you know who wears them and you know who doesn't. So anyways, um, and so- So they were uh, laughing at- Yeah, they, just, they were just laughing. They were just laughing because the whole thing was funny. Well, then they come over and they say, they give them these warning cards. Now you've been warned, it's your final warning. And you can get fined like tens of thousands of dollars. You can get arrested, all mm-hmm. this stuff. And so now one of the ladies who's like, you know, flies this all the time, she goes up and she goes, I don't understand even why you guys are picking on us. Like we, our masks are up. We're not doing anything mm-hmm. wrong. Why are you giving us this warning card? I see other people on here that aren't getting these warning cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy behind us has been warned five times to put his mask on. His is completely off of his face and he still hasn't done it. He didn't get a card. So it turns into this whole thing. Well, um, now it, this lady that goes up to talk to them doesn't want to like jeopardize her standing with the airline because she flies them all the time. Mm-hmm, she likes mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. So she's not being combative. She's just trying to understand. She's reasoning with them. Um, so, you know, she sits back down. Uh, then things get really weird because they give the guy behind them a card, a warning card finally. And, uh, and he throws it back at one of the Stewart flight attendants. Mm-hmm. I call, I'm sorry. I call them stewardesses because that's what they were. Anyway, when I was, wow. Anyways, flight attendants. It just, it's just, it comes out. Wow. It. So, so when he does this, um, they don't think it's him. They think it's one of the ladies, mm-hmm. probably my wife because of where she was sitting. And so now the flight attendant is saying like, well, basically you assaulted me by throwing this card at me. <laughs> and so they wrote it all up. Now these these three Christian ladies are going to be escorted off the plane once it lands. It's already mm-hmm. in the air when all this is happening. So it lands. The flight attendant says, everybody stay seated. Get the ladies off the plane. Get the ladies off the plane. Take them over to the cops. You have to issue a report. Mm-hmm. The, the cops are like, says that there was some kind of physical altercation. And they're like, no, we all have our cards. We didn't throw a card, but they thought we did. But here are our cards. We didn't throw them. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they go, oh, this is throwing a card. They called that. A, so the cops were totally cool on their side. Like everything was fine. But uh, yeah, they were denied flights back home. They had booked their flights through Spirit. And Spirit said, uh, <laughs> not welcomed. Nope, you're not flying back with us. So yeah, it was super awkward. And you know, my wife does not like confrontation. She doesn't want to get involved in this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it was super awkward for her. Yeah. So now, can we tell the real story? Oh, what's what do you what do you think the real story is? So, uh, from my understanding, um, as well, when I say my understanding, my imagination okay. tells me. <laughs> 
they got to O'Hare. Mm-hmm. They got there nice and early because they like to get there early. And they grabbed a few drinks. Nope. Had a couple. Nope. Uh, about four or five. <laughs> no. Got on the plane. None of this happened. And threw the mask in the air. Okay. And nope. and was screaming and waving their hands like they just don't care. Mm-hmm. And uh, they kept saying, hey, can you please put your mask on? And they said, what? Don't oppress me. Don't oppress me. Ha, ha, ha. And laughed at him. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's. But of course, within the realm of possibility, you know, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, all things are possible with God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but no, that did not happen. So it wasn't my imagination one? No. All right. No, that would be more fun though. That would, that would have been a better story. Except, you know, I wouldn't want to, though, here's the thing is like, I don't mind people talking back, pressing back against a bad policy, but you can't be so disruptive that you're like interrupting service or like, you know what I mean? Like you don't make other people uncomfortable on the plane unnecessarily and all that stuff, but they weren't even doing anything. They were just, they weren't doing any of that stuff, but just the, the power trip some some oh, some yeah, no, have, right absolutely. like some, some security guards yeah. cops like they, and, they and, can and all and this is not just this is not just like during covid no no, it, yeah, it, no. it's always been like built that. in yeah. you give you give someone a little, a little bit of power mm-hmm. and they have a bad day or they've just never had power to begin with they don't know how to you know they just go nuts you, like eddie murphy says i don't know you know, people say you give them an inch they take a mile. mile. He yeah. says, you give them a rope, they think they're a cowboy. Um, mm. It's like, yeah, like you've got a little bit of power and now you think like you're going to wield this thing like you have some, like because you, you finally have control or something. I've seen that. Super awful. But here's what's funny is like my wife, um, she gets in much more trouble than I do, which I think is amazing. Well, she's a lot more confrontational about it. My, my wife? Oh my goodness. My wife is not confrontational. In my imagination, I've seen her... <laughs> She's the least <laughs> confrontational person in I the know. whole family. Exactly. Well, maybe Catherine. Well, Catherine. Is less, I'm about yeah. to say Catherine's less. No, I mean she gets. She just had to go to court. My wife. Oh, so my imagination says drunk driving. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, she uh, she was speeding and she got a ticket. Uh, I don't remember which time it was. Oh, that's and, right. And um, so she she paid it, but she didn't fill out something. So then she had to go to the court and spend all this time there. Mm. I don't know what it was for. Yeah. So getting kicked off of planes and uh, going to court and getting tickets. That's my mm. wife, not me. Thank yeah. you very much. You know what? I, I never would have thought that, but mm-hmm. there it is. Yeah, let's uh, let's open up the mailbag. We're going to get into um, some questions that people are sending us. We got one from uh, well, we from a guy. Yeah, we're not going to say his name. I didn't even put it in there. Just and to make sure you didn't it. mess up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, says, uh, "Hey guys, hey this guys, will, this will be a really specific scenario. Um, so don't use our names. But I'm also 99 percent sure I'm the only one in my church that listens to your podcast. I am a youth minister, not a pastor." but a paid lay leader at a small rural church. The senior pastor is leaving, and it's partially due to a small faction, 10 or less, of the church members who reacted extremely negatively to COVID regulations in our church. So in other words, we're probably asking people to wear masks and Mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, This was just kindling for more conflict that would escalate. The senior pastor was always bearing the brunt of the attacks, but one member even physically threatened the worship pastor and the senior pastor, and there's still more than just this. Many in the church don't know that all this even happened. The worship pastor and I are staying because we have been called to serve this church. Good on you, brother. Um, How can the worship pastor and I help make sure the church is reconciled and is continuing in a direction of health as we search for a new senior pastor? And then are y'all coming to the annual meeting in Nashville? Maybe I'll see you there. Easy. First first part, um, I want to go to the SBC annual conference, but I got to decide really quick if I'm going to be able to do it. I doubt that Jimmy can go. Though I, I, I have no idea when it is. But uh, I know he would like to go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy got J-O-B. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what it is and what's going on during that time. All right, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hmm. Hmm. How do they, how do they reconcile this? Um, so really, really easy. You ready? Replant the church. Don't invite those members. <laughs> Keep it quiet. <laughs> Church of the DL. <laughs> you know, this is going to take time. Honestly, um, I think you probably need to bring, before you even get yep. a new senior pastor, mm-hmm. you need to get some help from the denomination, get an interim in there uh, to help work this thing out. Because it's going to continue with a new senior pastor. Yeah. Uh, listen, it sounds to me like some people need to come out of church discipline. Yeah. Now, if... You know, depending on the way your church is set up, uh, you know, it says uh, our church polity is single pastor and a plurality of deacons and many committees. Um, 
So maybe great. You can't. It's like the government; nothing gets done. You know? <laughs> but listen, man, somebody threatens violence. First of all, you threaten violence in our church, you're probably going to get your face knocked off. Yeah. I mean, because that's a, if it's a real threat, like people are going to defend themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For people, sure. people ain't playing. Nope. Um, but, and I wouldn't have a problem with it. You're threatening violence. You're going to, you know. But um, I like that's that's wicked. Yeah, that's wicked. Like that yeah. guy needs to come under discipline, or yep. that girl, that gal. Who don't know? Who knows? Yeah. Violence. So that yeah, church discipline. Uh, so let's put it this way. Uh, I would first. I think what Jimmy's saying is absolutely correct. You need an interim pastor. Get some help from a network, an organization, a denomination that can st- somebody that you trust that everybody's going to be pretty cool with. Bring somebody in there that can um, help you during this transition time. Then you're going to have to confront people that sinned. Yeah. Now, listen, um, is the church sinning by saying, hey, during this time, we're going to require people to socially distance and wear masks? No, that's not sin. You Whoa, may, <laughs> well, MacArthur says. You may not like it. Uh, you may think that it's unwise, but you can't argue that that, I don't think there's any argument that would say that that is sinful to do. To say, Please wear masks, socially distance. Got something going on here, trying to figure it out. Um, but threatening violence? Uh, yeah. Slander? you know, creating d- division and dissension in the church. You can have conversations and talks. So you don't have to confront people that have these kinds of, uh, these hostilities. And, uh, hopefully there, there's a way to appeal to them to see what, um, needs to change. And, you know, listen, um, depending on what your, your church may be overly restrictive, you know, it's possible that you guys have set up things that made it just too difficult. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what you got, what your policies are. Um, you know, if people have to come in and wear like a, a jump into a hazmat suit, look like a bunch of beekeepers just to worship, well, you're probably, you're going too far. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, get some help. I think that's probably the main thing. You're going to need some help. If you have, you don't have a plurality of elders that are leading. You have one guy and he's been forced out. Yeah. Yeah. You need some help. Yeah. You guys need help. Don't, don't bring someone else into this mess. No. Yeah. Bad idea. You want temporary guy to help heal things up. All right. Uh, number, let's see. A second email obsessed with masculinity. Oh, this is from Samantha Broccolini. Broccoli. Broccolini. Broccolo. Broccolo. <laughs> Broccolama ding dong. Go. Hey guys, I'm a longtime listener and love the podcast. My question comes from an observation. I've noticed this kind of obsession with masculinity in the Christian community with a whole podcast focusing on how to be more masculine, calling specific characteristics masculine, like boldness and leadership and other feminine, like gentleness, meekness, submissiveness. My question is, is this biblical? Aren't all Christians, male and female, called to be bold, lead by example, gentle, submit to one another? It's confusing, I think, to label certain characteristics masculine and others feminine because it can cause a man to feel less masculine if he tends to be more gentle and a female feel less feminine if she tends to be more bold. What say you? Thanks. Yeah, really good question. Um, So first of all, I would say the reason that so many Christians are talking about a masculinity is because our culture and every culture does, uh, has an investment in a certain form of masculinity. And then over time, that form of masculinity is challenged and then changes. Um, so there is a cultural shift happening or a perceived shift happening at least. And so people are like, Oh no, we're losing our understanding of masculinity. Mm-hmm. And so uh, people, because we have a cultural experience or, you know, understanding of masculinity. And so when it's challenging, you're like, oh no, what does that mean for us? Men aren't going to be men. Um, I think that's part of why it's it's happening. And uh, I, in short, what I would say is that, uh, yes, we need more talk on godliness then we do talk on masculinity versus femininity mm. because all of the um, all of the qualities that you would find in the character of a man um, are appropriately found in a godly woman as well, right? Like uh, working hard, taking responsibility, yeah. self sacrifice, self discipline, things like that. My my perspective is that. When the Bible, like when Paul says, act like men, mm-hmm. he is appealing to commonly understood traits that are prominently characteristic in most men. Um, they are not absent in women. 
They are just prominently characteristic of mm-hmm. men. They are culturally seen uh, truths, right? Or, or qualities, I would be a better word to say. And so when he says, act like men, he's telling the whole church, men and women, to be self-controlled, disciplined, take responsibility, and be sacrificial. I think that's that's the idea. Mm-hmm. And so there are masculine qualities and feminine qualities and when you, but when you're talking about masculine character qualities and feminine character qualities, I don't think that those are gender exclusive. I think that they just tend to be more prominent in mm-hmm, one sex mm-hmm, than the other mm-hmm. most of the time, not all of the time, mm-hmm. but we should share them all because yeah, we definitely need to be t- gentle and tender. Yep, yep. Paul says this about himself, right? Hey, weren't we just like tender mothers with you guys? Yeah. Like, and he's not yep. afraid to say it. Yep. He's like, well, yep. I don't want to use a chick reference. I don't know girl. He doesn't do that. What do you think, Jimmy? No, I mean, I absolutely agree. Uh, and I think uh, that, to put a fine point on what Joe said at the beginning there. I thought it was fine enough, but go ahead. <laughs> our culture has shifted so much. Yeah. Um, and it, it shifted so much that, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of blog posts and podcasts really trying to like push hard the other direction to bring back this equilibrium because there's a lot of guys that there are men that don't know what it means to be a man. Right. And, um, and there's a lot of men that become, have become complacent. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's focusing on, on what masculinity is, um, to help sway. Right. And I think part of the, part of the problem is, is like masculinity, like you're just like, I want you to be a man. Okay. Well, that simply means in my mind, that simply means I want you to be a godly person Mm -hmm. in the, your particular example. So since you are a man, I want you to be a godly man. Mm-hmm. And so it, usually when they're saying that, they're finding qualities lacking in a male uh, that are typically associated with men. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have a beard or like chopping wood. It means- Or own your guns. Or own your guns or whatever it is, right? You don't have to cigars. have cigars. It means, right? Self-discipline, responsibility, sacrifice, hard work. That's what mm-hmm. it means. So uh, I, and again- those things should be true of women, but they're prominently true of men. Uh, and so if you if somebody sees those that those things are lacking, then that's probably why they might be pushing on it. Mm-hmm. Or they might be sensing like, wow, you are so different from us and from our cultural understanding of masculinity, which typically might look a certain way in a particular part of the country. Mm-hmm. Right. So like if you like, let's just say if I know I look <laughs> I look like the kind of guy that might like to hunt because I have a beard, uh, but I, I don't. I've never gone no. hunting a day in my life. Um, I, I've, I've, I've never really shot a rifle. I, th- I think I shot a shotgun when I was 12, mm. but like, so I can manipulate handguns all day long, but I, I don't know anything about rifles. So, um, but like if you put me or Jimmy in a rural context, people might not think that we're very manly at all because, mm. you know, we're white collar and we're, we don't hunt. Uh, but Jimmy likes to fish. That's kind of like hunting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> so I think sometimes people get confused about it like that way. They think like, oh, you you don't fit into our cultural expression of masculinity, which isn't right or wrong. It's just cultural. So therefore, you're not manly, which is why the church needs to be people that says, well, number one, um, masculine traits and feminine traits are good. But what really matters is godliness. Yeah. That's that's the thing. That's what we need to be pushing. And I always think it's funny because sometimes the smallest and softest, most delicate men that I know, who are men, uh, they like to talk about masculinity. And <laughs> sometimes they talk about it in these stereotypical ways a little bit much. Mm, and it's like, mm. like, bro, what are you talking about, man? You're talking about how men need to like be fighters and all this stuff and like you're soft. Like it just don't do that. Like, I, focus on godliness. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you're, and if you are talking about that, you know, men need to fight, well, in what way and how, and you, I want, I want my, I want the women in my house to know how to fight Yeah, in every way. Yep. Physically, uh, spiritually, mm-hmm, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I want, I want, I want my women to know. Anywho. All right. So yeah. Hey, uh, Samantha Brockalama Ding Dong, you, Hey, thanks for listening. What about this third one? Oh, critiquing conservatives. David, I can't pronounce his last name. Mm-hmm. I think that's his typo. Um, always enjoy the banter of truth, which means he's an all access member. Hey, David, thank you. Thank you. For subscribing and thank supporting you. the podcast so we can do awesome stuff. Listened in to today's uh, episode about Julie Royce and criticizing those in other tribes. I knew Julie in college. I was intrigued. 
I liked what she had to say about McDonald on your podcast and noticed that she always, only, ever criticizes and, quote, investigates conservative organizations, conservative preachers, and those popular in the conservative Christian circles. It would be great to find someone who was genuinely unbiased, but oh well. So question? Doesn't look like it. Just an observation. Oh, you just wanted to share that? <laughs> well, I wanted. I thought it would be good to say that uh, we, people have different focuses, right? And so um, some people uh, are a general news organization, and they're going to have a broad sort of if they're if they're proper news, right? They're going to be investigating or looking at and talking about things on every conceivable side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then, you know, other ministries or other outlets might be focusing more in a specific area. Now, for us, for example, uh, like when we are critical, we are we tend to be more critical of our own people or of our own tribe. We're I'm going to I'm going to focus on mm -hmm. Protestants, evangelicals, Baptists and reformed, uh, you know, with increasingly focus because those are our people. And the yeah. more you are my people and we, so when when we're messing up, the more I want to talk about how we're messing up. Because Yeah, and and it's to the point where, you know, people you know uh slam us for that, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh here you are again, punching right, coddle left. <laughs> I'm not, we're not coddling left. We just, it's like, I don't care. That's not my people. That's not my people. <laughs> I like, like I'm trying to clean up, man. Here's the thing is I, I see the left and I, I already know, I, I know they're crazy. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, why, why do I have to mess with that? Yeah. It's, it's, it, listen, it, it, it's such a different worldview. Yeah. Whether you're talking theologically left, politically left, whatever, like that's not where we're at. And so that is another world. And so I'm not, I'm not going to. Not, yeah. I can't fix that. No. But I can address our issues and we'll talk about all of it. Yep. But in terms of focus, so listen, Julie is a conservative and she she's mostly concerned about conservative circles. It's probably why she focuses more on that stuff. Um, but if she really is for advocating for for truth and for helping people, then I would think that anytime there's someone is in danger, she would be willing to go there. Right. So if there's a church that's mm -hmm. not conservative, but it's you know, doing a lot of damage. I think she would. I, I, but again, I don't know. I don't read her. I'm not like Jimmy. I don't read her. I don't read her every post that comes up every day over there. You know? <laughs> Jimmy just tells me which ones I should check out. Pretty much. <laughs> Next one, time management. Oh, Ryan, I'm going to read this one because you're going to answer Ryan it. Ryan Bandy. Do you know him? Oh, yeah. 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 Big beard. We know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. His, he, Masculine uh, he, guy. Him and his dad, yeah. uh, they, they came to the conference. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm going to read this because you're going to answer it. Well, now why? It's for you. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, you did. Okay, fine. You read it. Uh, hey, guys. With Z's. Z's. Much love to you from Charleston, West Virginia. A couple of questions for you. Time management. In addition to your pastoral ministry, ministry, shepherding, teaching, etc., how do you make time for frequent podcasts and writing? Sorry, Fofo. JoJo's books exceed 100 pages and therefore are not pamphlets. I recently made the move to a much larger ministry and now find it very difficult to find the time or bandwidth to write articles, something I enjoy, or writing of any kind apart from sermons. Number two, somewhat related to first question, would you walk us through your typical daily and or weekly routine? All righty. Well, mm. um, go ahead, Joe. Number one, I am always trying to relearn or learn time management, better practices. I've made good strides uh, the beginning part of this year, uh, but I have, a, I have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. So um, I am not an expert. I can only tell you what I am learning along the way. Guys like Jimmy are really good at time management uh, because well, he probably would have been fired if he's not, <laughs> because he, not mm -hmm. from ministry, but from his job, because it's like so critical. Like what mm -hmm. you do is so important. So Jimmy, my, Jimmy's probably going to have some things to say here. Um, so number one, uh, how do you make time for frequent podcast writing and all of that? A couple of things to consider. Number one, you have to know how many hours a week you're putting in for your ministry. Yeah. Like you, if you leave it undefined, it will eat up every hour of your day and night. Yep. You cannot do that. You have to say, these are the hours I'm on the clock and these are the hours I'm not on the clock. And then if there's an emergency or you're needed, then you go back on the clock in those special circumstances. Yep. But define your time, right? Have a calendar, make every hour, every half hour, put it on there. This is family time. This is me time, whatever. So map it out. Know what your um, hourly commitment is uh, for the week for your ministry. And then that way, you know, oh, here is when I'm off now. That is when I can do my extra stuff, whether that's a podcast or a writing project mm -hmm. or date night or skeet shooting or you live in West Virginia. I don't know, like uh, like those those grow houses or whatever you guys are doing over there. I don't want to judge. <laughs> um, so 
that's what you do. It's the only way to do it. Now, some churches might not mind if you're writing Christian articles for publication or even working on a book during your office hours um, because they view it all as sort of connected. But I didn't function that way because um, I just have, I have a whole lot to do. And so like, if I'm doing that, I'm not getting something else done that could be done on on our time. So for mm-hmm. Jimmy and I, uh, anytime we're recording, doing podcast stuff, that is on our time, that is not on church time. That's the simplest way to put it. We mm-hmm. rec- we do the we do banter of truth, doctrine, devotion, all of it on our time, not on church time. Uh, any advice on time management, Jimmy? Because uh, just general advice that you think would help people. Yeah, um, I, you know, Joe talked about you know every hour, every half hour. If you could do that, that's great. I find it helpful to break the day into three segments uh, and make sure that you're home for one. So whether you're uh, you should be eating at home one meal a day, uh, like during the workday. Uh, so whether that's breakfast or dinner, whenever your kids are gone, whatever your kids are gone, that's when you want to eat alone, just you by yourself. (laughs) But yeah, it's, it, you know, I do it from, you know, uh, breakfast to lunch, lunch to dinner, dinner to bed. And so I break my day and I say, okay, when am I going to be home? Um, and these are the times I'm working. What am I working on at those times? Just like Joe said, uh, so it's not always the same for you, right? It might mostly be dinner to bed, but sometimes... Sometimes it's it's a shift, right? So if I know I'm going to have a late night, then I, I stay home in the morning, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I can totally vouch for this, by the way. This is not Jimmy talking ideologically. He practices this. Yeah. Um, and so I, I very much go by that. And so... Um, and learn to say no, I, mm-hmm. especially young guys in ministry, um, hungry guys, yeah, hungry guys. And it, it turns into, you know, uh, overworked and, uh, burnt out older men, yeah. um, learn to just say, no, it's fine. It's okay to say no. And if they're going to, if they're going to fire you over, it, yeah, if they're going to fire you over that, then it's probably not a church to be at anyways. If a church is that like rigid and is that controlling, you shouldn't be there. Yeah. If you, if you're getting fired, it's either because, uh, you're getting railroaded or you deserve it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one or the other. It's one or the other. And so, yeah, if if you're a lazy person, then you shouldn't be in ministry at all. Yeah. Because it's, it's very it's very intense. But uh, but if you're a hardworking person, yeah, I, I totally agree, Jimmy. Yeah, you, and I know I've said, no. I, yeah, I've said in the past, you know, every time you say yes, you're saying no to something. So if you're saying yes to this extra meeting, you're saying no to being with your family. Mm-hmm. And um, that that's unacceptable to me. And so unless it's an emergency, like Joe said, I, I won't take on extra things. Uh, the elders know this. I'm, I'm very clear on it. Um, you know, for extra meetings and stuff, it has to fall in line with our previously scheduled meetings. Uh, cause I, I can't add anything else. Um, because I, Michelle, you know, and that's the other part then is especially as, as in ministry, you need to be talking to your wife. She needs to be part of your calendar and to understand your calendar and to sign off on your calendar. Like these are my work hours and here's when I'm, these are the hours, you know, my personal time during that time, you know, I want to make, I I want these regular date nights. I want these regular time with our kids, our family, you know, uh, activities. Like she needs to be involved in that. And when you deviate from it and you take time from the family, she needs to sign off on that. Like that has to be communicated and you need to talk to your wife and, um, cause she's that, that's, she's part of it. She's part of it. Yeah, it's good. That's good. So, uh, yeah. And so a typical daily or week routine for me, simply put, I'll just keep it real simple here so we can keep moving. Um, Monday is basically a study day. Um, I like to work on Mondays because I'm eager to get back to it. Uh, and I don't suffer from the Monday blues, like some preachers, a lot of preachers, I've never had that a day in my life. So I get depressed. Don't get me wrong, but I don't have like, I'm not like, Oh, I Mm -hmm. feel bad about everything on Monday. I just don't do that. I'm ready to get going. Let's do this again. So I like to work, but I am tired. So I like to just study. So basically it's a, it's a, you know, a few cigars and a whole lot of books and like reading sermon prep, study resources, uh, all that stuff. And I'm going to go, I'm going to jump on this. I, I've, seen a lot of guys take Monday off because they're tired. I think that's wrong. And and I personally, I struggle with that because then you're, you're giving your family the leftovers. Yeah. Like what does that communicate to your kids? You know, like my day off is my day. I'm tired and I can't be with you. Yeah, Don't leave me alone. Yeah. And and that is how I am on Mondays. Yeah. (laughs) And so that's why you should be in the office (laughs) alone, alone studying during that time. And Friday, 
Yeah. Take that's my Friday day off. off mm-hmm. right? uh, Party time. And, and, Weekend and is you're here. You're much more refreshed. Right. So I'm just saying, don't, don't, yeah, that, that's my thought on it. Don't give your family the leftovers. Yep. Totally agree. You know, and that's, that's why even, reason. even for us, you know, we began implementing uh, work at home Fridays, you know, and part of that for me yeah. is, you know, I can get from, a lot this of this for your, your, Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah your job, well, your vocation. Well, yeah. Vo- vocation for me um, began changing my schedule and saying, okay, I, I mean, I find myself anyways, leaving around noon. So I was like, why not just work at home for the morning then? Yeah. You know, um, because Fridays, because the kids are at school, I, that's typically when Michelle and I go and have lunch together. Mm-hmm. So it's like, might as well work at home. You know, that way I could just be there more, right. especially as the summer comes, the kids, you know, I could work at home in the morning and then we can hang out for the afternoon together. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Totally good. So, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my Monday. Um, then the other days of the week are a bit of a mix. Like Wednesday is when I try to put most of my meetings, um, like with church members or, or people visiting the church, try to do that Wednesday into Wednesday night. What's wrong? Uh, I just saw this article that Julie Roy has posted. Well, let's talk like, you know, we're going to do ban. We'll, okay. We'll save it. We'll, we're going to save this for banter of truth. Okay. Cause we're doing banter of truth after this. So what was I saying? Uh, sorry. I, it was, it's that. You're supposed to be in the moment with us. Bro, I'm sorry. You're seriously like surfing the web. No, we're supposed no. to be. It popped up. Okay. How does it, it ain't popping up. It, I turn minutes. off my notifications when we're recording. That's how I do okay, it. I'm just saying though, no, this is, this is, this, this, okay. this, this is. All right. This is. And this is why you got to subscribe to all access. You get that uh, banter of truth stuff. <laughs> we going now. Uh, we're going to have to read this and talk about it. Go. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, Wednesday meetings, lots of meetings. Uh, and it's my late night. That's the one night that I will work late. I won't make it home for dinner. Otherwise I try to be home, you know, by five thirty, five five thirty, 30 during the week. Um, Thursday, I try to wrap up my, uh, my sermon notes so that they're mostly done. Like I could preach it, but it's not until Saturday when it's actually sort of finessed and everything. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Tuesdays, uh, as well as Thursdays are sort of a mixed bag. I've got some regularly occurring meetings with uh, people at the church. You know, I might have a meeting with uh, Pastor Brian or um, or Pat or whatever. Uh, so it kind of it kind of depends. Friday day off, Saturday uh, basically like a half day. So we have a lot of we have meetings on Saturdays sometimes. Sometimes it's a full day because we might have uh, extra meetings. It might be like a, an orientation or a new membership class, mm-hmm. elders meetings sometimes that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, Sunday, church day. Yeah, that's about it. All right. Oh, okay. So then uh, last last uh, email for the for the day, I'm going to read yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm going to read it. You're going to answer gonna, it. No, no, I'm going to read it. Why are you going to read it? Just because yeah, we just got to Okay, all right, let's go. Hey, guys. Love the transparency, honesty, knowledge, and banter y'all share with us every week. I love that y'all- Oh, uh, I know why you want to read allowed it. Allowed an opportunity for us to support the ministry in a financial way through the All Access membership. Content is amazing. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, anyways- I thought I remembered hearing in a podcast a year or so ago that there might possibly be a Doc and Devo conference in the Southeast uh, USA, Atlanta, Georgia, coming in the future. I know a lot has happened since then, but are there still any plans to head down this way for a conference in the near future? I live in Georgia and would love to have Doc and Devo conference close enough to attend. I hope the Lord allows y'all to head this way sometime soon. I Here comes would the love lie. that. Here comes Jesse. the lie. Oh, you're just not going to read the rest. Okay, I got it. What? No, no. What are you, talking about? you don't have to read the rest. It's fine. I'll do it. P.S. Yes. We say y'all a lot around here and are proud of it. And I'm not going to leave the usual comment most emails make about the podcast wife since we all know who that is. And then it says. Well, no, he was just saying like, says, we dot, all know dot, who that dot, is. And then it says Jimmy. No, but that and was. And then it says in Christ, Jesse. Okay. No, no, but no, no, he wasn't calling me the podcast wife. Yeah. You know no, what no, it was, huh? yeah, yeah. no, no, it was just saying, hey, Jimmy. <laughs> we all know Jimmy. Uh, no, that would be a comma space. We all know who that is, Jimmy. Is speaking to you. Yeah. He says, "We all know who that is." Ellipsis, Jimmy, yeah. implying it's you. But okay, from Georgia, they don't know. Yeah, that's grammar. true. All that. Well, apparently, hey, listen, if you're from Georgia, don't use the word pride. What? Don't use the word proud. We're proud. Even if you're just talking <laughs> about y'all, it's just it's, it's confusing for the Northerners who get triggered about that kind of stuff. Right. Okay, Jimmy, are we going to do regional conferences? Would love to. Yeah. Yep. And if, uh, basically. Uh, for us to pull it off, you know, we need a decent sized group of people that would want us to come down so that you know. Uh, everything works out. Like we got to get the gear down there. We got to fly and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So um, yeah, we would love to do something in the uh, Atlanta, Southeast yeah. uh, Atlanta, Georgia area. We do have listeners in that area of the country. So uh, yeah, if you would like us to do something there, uh, send us an email and, and if uh, there's any churches that are willing to host us. Yeah. If we have church willing to host us, you know, we've got our, uh, 
speaker page. If you go to a, the info section of our church yep. website, go to us. There's like a speaker request form. You can fill that out and work out something for us to do a regional conference in your area. Well, we'd love to hear thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. Going to Julie Royce. <laughs> you can head to the website, drdevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email oh. blast. Yeah. Or hit up the store, joefostore.com and grab some gear. We got that fresh pot every Monday and Thursday. We got blog posts and video content over at the website. We've got that all access exclusive content, Banter of Truth on Tuesday. And this even though might this might not is, mean what she said, I'm oh, I see, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a Thursday episode, but y'all need to go back to the Tuesday episode at Banter of Truth because we're about to talk about something. We're going to record something for Tuesday, but it's only for our all access people. All right. And so you got Banter of Truth on Tuesdays. You got your weekday wisdom Monday through Friday. Thank you. Later. Oh.